Good morning and welcome to a new edition of the Big Joel Show. Very excited this morning coming to you live from uh, Washington, D.C. metro area. I have Megan Wassinger. 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 Well, no, right I butcher time. it every single time <laughs> because I said I have another Wassinger friend in, in, in Florida, uh, Chris Wassinger. Chris, if you're listening. Um, Megan is a super successful agent uh, in the Washington, D.C. metro area, real estate agent. She is also and most recently has become the managing broker for Keller Williams Capital Properties here in D.C. But don't let, uh, you know, don't let that uh, cause you to turn this off because Megan and her team sell a lot of real estate and have for the past 13 years in the D.C. metro area area. And so today I'm going to be talking with Megan about lots of lots of different things, but especially um, the, one of the main things we're going to talk about is her work-life balance uh, because uh, she is pretty busy and she also has, wait for it, 12 kids. 12. And if you're looking at Megan right now, you're thinking, wait a minute, <laughs> how old is she? Um, and uh, I'm in the studio right now with her, and uh, I just, just want to let you know that she's 19. She <laughs> had her first child at seven. I don't really know how that worked out. But um, so, uh, Megan, uh, tell me uh, a little bit about your background. How did you get into real estate? Why did you even start selling real estate? Oh, so that's kind of an interesting story. My um, oldest brother, uh, I'm one of 10 children. My oldest brother was- Hold on, hold on. Did you hear that? <laughs> okay, has 12, one of 10, go. I'm from Boston, and my brother was selected as a White House fellow, and he needed to move his family of, at that time, I think they had eight children, um, to Arlington, Virginia, like overnight. And I said, um, I said, well, it can't be that hard to get a real estate license. I'll get Were one. Were you just a full-time mom at that time? At that point, I was a okay. full-time mom. Right. Yeah, I mean, I volunteered a lot and had started a lot of little organizations. Okay. But um, but I was full-time mom. So I said, I'll, I'll just get my license, and in two weeks when you come, I'll start showing you property. <laughs> and my brother, my brother who was really, gr I mean, really great about it because um, I was basically telling him I have no experience. You're buying a $1.4 million house and uh, in Arlington, and I'm going to be the worst real estate agent ever. And I think at the time he basically said, the only thing you can lose is money, and it'll be a great learning experience for you. So it was a, a good example of um, – a big brother kind of that's a pretty cool uh, pretty, pretty, pretty pretty cool big brother huh because i'm sure yeah. you probably screwed up just a couple I, of things I, in actually that transaction, the other right? agent was wonderful she okay i forgot her name now but i i said i don't have a lot of experience she says i know i looked up your nmls <laughs> number your mls number i said this is my first sale and it's you know 1.4 million dollars and um, I was hoping you could help me a little bit on it and uh, heard with my broker who was one who's wonderful my old broker um, w together helped me and my brother was very challenging like he made me learn I learned probably 85 percent of what I know on that transaction because it wasn't easy all right so uh, you know Megan and her team uh, sell we'll call it 40 plus houses a year um, those of you listening just so you know the national average for NAR is I think it's 4.7 houses a year, I think, is the national uh, average for, uh, for for real estate agents. And um, Megan and her team are selling forty plus houses. We actually think it's a little higher, but we weren't. Uh, we were trying to figure it out before. And so, um, Megan, tell me. So you have twelve kids. Um, mm -hmm. You're married. Your husband works full time, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Out of the house, he doesn't work in the house, right? Uh, no, he, he's a he's a lobbyist. So he's going. He's leaving the house every day. Every day. Okay. So 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 tell uh, share from a just from a productivity standpoint. Um, you know, those of you listening today, uh, real estate agents, you know how busy you think you are, and <laughs> a lot of times, I, I love some of these conversations when I meet agents at big events, and they'll they'll come up to me and they'll want to talk to me and they're maybe want to engage me about coaching or something. And I'll start talking to them and say, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And I'll say, well, how many houses did you sell last year? And they'll tell me their volume. And I'll say, no, 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 how many houses? They'll tell me their volume again. And then finally, they'll tell me how many houses and they'll say, you know, 13 houses. And I'll say, okay, so you sold 1.08 house a month. And then I will very quickly say, and please don't be offended, people, and turn me off. What did you do for the other three weeks of the month, every month? Because you had a lot of time on your hands. You know, what, what do you have another job? Meaning what 
you know, why, why did you only sell out one house a month? Um, Megan is selling a lot of houses and uh, managing a pretty massive uh, household. Yeah. So um, share with us, I want to get into some of your marketing too, but okay. share, share with the group um, just a little bit how you manage that. What are your thoughts on the whole term of I'm too busy? Um, so I, I, you know, in the day-to-day interactions with other agents, I definitely, the whole idea of having 12 children does not come up in the typical transaction, but I do get such a kick out of some agents that are like too busy to return my phone call or they're just, you know, so big. They, they don't have time to pick up a call. They can just text me. And I just, I laugh because I think to myself, I, they could not possibly be busier than me. It's, it's, so agents, yeah. you're never too busy to return phone calls. It's, it's a, I want to, I want to just, I want you to key on that. Okay. You're never too busy to return a phone call. People. Texting, email, it's it, it, it's over now, okay? Um, the number one way to build a relationship, the number one way to increase your sales is your voice. And by the way, your voice, by the way, doesn't cost any money. You don't have to pay your voice $1,000 a month for lead gen, okay? Um, actually just picking up the phone and making a call or actually taking the call. And I have to tell you, it's funny that you say that. Um, I hear this all the time. Oh, I'm too busy. And I just say to myself, I just know what their business looks like from the inside. Yeah. If they think they're too busy or I'm talking to agents about um, presenting themselves really as a real estate expert, mm-hmm. not as a someone that just lists and sells houses, someone that's right. the go-to person for any question you have from the front walk to the back fence. Yeah. Okay. And they'll say, well, I don't want those calls. And I'm like, Really? So you don't want to talk to someone about their home that you will probably potentially list. You don't want to be standing in their yard with them, maybe looking at something having to do with their house. And I'll look at them and I'll say, if you want to get hit by a car, where do you stand? And they'll go, (laughs) "Uh, I don't know. And I'll go, let me help you out. Traffic. (laughs) You want to list a house, where's the best place to be? In the yard or in their kitchen. Am I, am I off base anywhere there? Um, and, and they'll just kind of, they're kind of looking at me like, well, that's not my job. And I'm like, that's your number one problem. You don't really understand what your job is. You're missing your job, you know? And, and I tell people all the time, I use the term, I say foot phone email. If you're about to send an email, pick up the phone. And if you're about to pick up the phone, think, can I do this on foot? Could I actually Mm -hmm. show up and what would happen? So, so tell us, I mean, what would you say is number one, number two, from a productivity perspective? You have lots of little voices looking for you. You have lots of things going on. You're married. You have, I know what my wife would say. Yeah, I have five kids, not four. <laughs> I'm the fifth kid. You know, you, you have you have lots of action all around you, and you're busy. Yeah. You're, you are a busy real estate agent. Tell some people, give some people some good. What time do you get up in the morning? Talk about that oh, a little I bit. Wish, I wish I was such a role model. <laughs> Um, our day gets started usually, you know, the kids get on the bus, um, breakfast, we make sure lunches. Um, is you know, it like that movie typical. where they're all making the lunches in a row? What's that movie um, where they're all making the lunches? Cheaper by the dozen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, we. Ha- I'm a big delegator, so I actually don't do everything. So, you know, I'm not like Mary Poppins or anything like that. Um, we have different people in the family are responsible for different things. So one person makes the lunches usually the night okay. before. Um, I, I'm not even, I, I don't want to ha- have you think I'm some superwoman. Sometimes I don't check my kids' backpacks. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I don't sign their homework folder. Um, you know, I used to stress out about that. But really, you know, nothing happens if you don't sign their homework folder every night. So um, every day looks uh, really different, actually, because you can imagine with that many kids and different sporting activities and Baseball, gymnastics, um, meal prep, every every day looks different. But that means when you're working, you really need to be productive. You know, I had a... Did yeah, a, you have to use your time. Wisely. I did a podcast with a guy by the name of, his name is Brian Mankell, and uh, he's either the number one or number two loan officer in the country. Mm-hmm. You know, he does like $500 million a year. He's yeah. crazy, crazy successful. And he always says his trick, his whole trick is to work eight hours. And people are like, what do you right. mean? He's like, no, 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 no actually work right. eight hours nobody does no no literally <laughs> the whole eight hours right. be not eating donuts not hanging out in the kitchen right. not gossiping actually be working and i would think that you probably have to roll like that right because yeah. you got to be game on 
with the amount of time that you have. Right. So you're getting a lot done in a shorter time period. Right. Yeah. I think you operate a big family just kind of like a business. You know, you you have checklists and things that need to be done. And we have some rules that make everything operate smoothly. And you delegate a lot. I mean, I delegate. Even in my real estate company, I delegate things to people I know are good at them. So, so what are the core activities that you don't delegate that you would never delegate? This is huge because a lot of times in, uh, in, in real estate with all the training and all the stuff you guys get, there are trainers out there that will literally tell you to delegate the world. And I run into this all the time with agents where I'm like, whoa, uh -huh. wait a minute. You just delegated a core activity. You just delegated something that made you who you are. You can't delegate that yeah, one. Yeah, I, I don't. I guess I don't delegate negotiations with and um, interactions with other agents. I think that's too. Um, that's too. That's too. That, that can go south really quickly, especially if you know with personalities involved. And I wouldn't delegate that. What about a uh, new client calls looking for you, referred to you? I always take them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, what things do you very consistently delegate in your business? <laughs> Paperwork. Okay. Very consistently. As in transaction Thank coordinator you, kind of stuff? Yeah, I have an okay. admin and she's excellent at it. Okay. Now, now when you say paperwork, I want to get just a little technical here. Um, you know, at what point is it going to leave your hands? This is, this so is, I, I think, I important exactly. because... I, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of agents out there that they take some of this training and some of the stuff they hear way too far and they're delegating things that they should not really be yeah. delegating because someone told them to and they don't realize how it's affecting their business. Um, so tell me a little bit about it. When you get a new phone call with a, a new referral, mm -hmm. tell everyone what's your normal routine? What do you do? Do you like to see them if you can yeah i try to meet them for coffee okay um so so coffee so not in an office not your office no. or their office mm -mm. you try to go personal mm -hmm. right away always and mm -hmm. and what do you say to them in this busy world of no 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 i don't have time what do you say to make that happen um no they i never have trouble i said let's meet for coffee and we set a time. Sometimes, you know, we'll set a time and we cancel it. And some, it might be a month before I actually get a chance to meet them. But if they're just talking to me on email and a friend referred them, there's no connection with me. And so I just want to get to know them. And when I do meet them for coffee, which I probably do this maybe four times a month, I'll meet a new client for coffee. And when I do meet them, I just want to get to know them. So I just ask them lots of questions about their hobbies. And um, it's just... It's really just getting to know them as a person, you know, and we just have a real informal chat. And then I say, okay, well, let's, you know, would you like, would you like me to start a search for you? Have you talked to a lender? That kind of thing. So, oh, but I, as far as delegating, I always write the contract myself. The hold on, contract. hold that thought for one second, because okay. you just did enough where we could stop now. Okay. I just want to take that apart because okay. I know what the agents are doing all day. Okay. okay. Now, so this woman sitting next to me, this 19 year old next to me with 12 <laughs> kids, um, who is extremely busy. Number one, she sells 10 times the amount of real estate that the average agent sells. Okay. Her and her team, it doesn't even matter. It's being, it's being brought in by her. Okay. And, and by the way, she has 12 kids and a husband. Again, my wife would say she has 13 kids. Okay. Um, she just said that she is literally trying to meet with every referred client. Now, your business is what? 100% referral? I would say it's it's really- 97% referral? Probably 97. Okay. So, 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 I don't do you much know. marketing, to No, be but you're, you're, this is, you're right out of my playbook. And yeah. I mean, that's Go what ahead. I'm all about. And, and um, so, and, and w w what she just said, what Megan just said is, Megan just said, I try to meet with everyone for coffee and I don't talk about business. I get to know them. This is so important, everyone. This is really, really important. Okay. Um, the two greatest sales techniques, you want to know what they are? Sure. I'd love to. They're guilt and sympathy. And you can't have either one of them 
without a relationship. Interesting. Okay. And when people hire real estate agents, they're hiring you to represent them in what is probably for 99.8% of the people in the world, their single largest investment they will ever have. Right. Meaning if they stay in that house, they will probably have more equity in that house than they have in their 401k or any place else. Right. And you are now running point on that. Right. Okay. And so this extremely busy person with 12 kids <laughs> and a husband, okay, and, um, and, and, and a team and a managing broker for a huge uh, Keller Williams group here in the D.C. metro area is going and physically having coffee with people to connect with them. Not to drop some script on them that she bought or learned at a training event somewhere about how to either list their home or find a home, correct? correct. There's no scripting, no scripting. You know, there is, hey, how you doing? I'm Megan. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Okay? And, and that is huge, everyone. And this is the hardest, easiest part about real estate. It's mm -hmm. simple if you understand what you're doing. This is so hard for agents because, ready, they think they're too busy. I, I hear that all the time. <laughs> Joel, I'm too busy to take an hour and a half and to sit with someone for coffee. What are you talking about? I'm I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm like, okay, you want me to come watch you for a day and we'll see yeah. how busy you are? You don't want me to put a camera on you all yeah. day. I would love a GoPro on me. Yeah, because, because <laughs> but but this, this is, and, and, and let me, you know, just, I want to unpack this for one more second. Okay. That cost zero. Nothing. Cup of coffee. That costs nothing. Nothing. There's no $500 check, $1,000 check, no this, that, boom, that, whatever. You didn't write a check to anyone. You just sat down with somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, 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 and that's huge. And I just, I wanted to make sure it's these little things. You just blow through it. It's normal for you. Yeah. That is not even remotely normal for most of the real estate agents watching this. Yeah. And they would text me and call me and go, wow. You know, I'm, I'm not doing that. This is what I do. I get off the phone with them. I send them this email. That I have this person call them here. That I do this intake. I do this buyer intake thing over the phone. Mm -hmm. Then I do this. Then I do that. There's no connection up front. I want to play devil's advocate for a minute. But don't you think they're different? I mean, I, I have agents in our office that are very, you know, regimented. They mm -hmm. make so many calls. Mm -hmm. They make 250 calls. You're going to get three leads every time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They have, they, they track everything. Mm -hmm. I definitely have a much more organic relationship-based approach, but their approach works too. Their approach works too if you like being a telemarketer. It's all good, <laughs> okay? And and when agents call me for coaching and I ask them how their business is set up, if it's set up that way, I let them know I'm not your person. What I'm about is raising your hourly rate through the roof. I'm about tripling your volume without you having to call 250 people and get three people to say yes. I, I was just did an agent presentation somewhere. I was in New Orleans or I was somewhere and it was hilarious. I'm like, okay, here we go. We call 100 people. Five people say maybe. Three people say yes. Three people you show up to. Two people argue with you. Two of them you get listed 50,000 over and it never goes anywhere and you get one transaction. And yeah, great. Let's do the math. Okay, Turn you made, <laughs> you made $9,200 you know, making those 100 mm -hmm. phone calls. Or, you know, my method, talk to eight people, list eight houses. You know, yeah. no, you know, hi, hi, how are you doing? My name's Megan with Keller Williams. Uh, I was wondering, <laughs> I was wondering if you have time to sit down or if you have to blah, 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 and click. Eh, eh, eh. So you're correct. There's lots of different ways to do the business. The way you're doing the business is the highest hourly rate and ready, everybody. It's the most fun. It's the most fun. It's the most fun. Yeah. Uh, when I talk to agents, when I'm doing coaching or whatever, a big group, they'll come up to me and they'll be like, they were like, I've been waiting to like hear someone like yeah. you talk because I hate making these phone calls and getting hung up on. I just hate it. And you know what? All sales training is based that way. It doesn't matter what you sell. If you get in front of enough people and you ask for the business, enough people are going to say yes, you're going to wear them down and they're going to give you the business. Right. But this is my favorite thing. And you, you'll crack up at this because you have been kind doing this for a while. I'm an entrepreneur here. I, this really I, shakes up the whole real estate industry. Well, 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 well <laughs> you'll, you, will, you will crack up at this. I'll say when I do events, raise your hand if you have a listing right now where you would literally like to put a hit out on the seller. You want to kill them. Literally, they're horrible. And the hands will all go up. And then I'll say, oh. leave your hand up if that was a cold lead or a relative. And every hand stays up. They're like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, that's not the warm referral. No. I, I say to agents all the time, I'm like, what kind of listing would you like? This one, hi, I was referred to you by so-and-so. Um, 
And uh, I'd like to know if you can come over at 1 p.m. to potentially list my home. Now, I'd like to make sure you park on the street because oh, yeah. the 12 p.m. agent out. is going to still be there. <laughs> the, you're going to need to be out by 1.55. There is a 2 p.m. agent coming after you. By the way, just so we're clear, I already know that my house is worth $529,000, and that's what we'll be listing for. Meanwhile, the comps are like four sixty. <laughs> okay, that's that's door number one. Here's door number two. We're out there hi, paying any commission. <laughs> hi, I was referred to you by... Um, can you come over and list my house? Yeah. They said you're awesome. You show up, list the house in eight minutes, and eat cookies for another 32 minutes and look at pictures. I call that a cookie listing. And yeah. I'm like, who wants door number two? And all the hands go up. And I'm like, I'm letting you know yeah. you can absolutely have a door number two business. you got to be strategic about it. Right. You have to understand what your job is. Okay, absolutely. but I just wanted to I've not— I've always been embarrassed that my, that I, my marketing is so, <laughs> you know— I mean, my sales pitch and things like that, I've always been kind of embarrassed about it, that it is all relationship-based. Like, I should be doing more, you know? Just, just, just so, so you know. it's good to hear you and, say and, that. And, and everyone, just so you know, we have never met each other before. No. <laughs> Megan was referred to me by uh, one of my current clo- uh, coaching clients. And and so I'm just hearing this, uh, and this is really cool, and I want to let you know that you're 100% right on. Don't change anything that you're doing. Okay, thank okay? you. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, you mm-hmm. will have the highest hourly rate out of anybody around you, period. Mm-hmm. And there are lots of agents like you that do it exactly the way you do it, and they're selling 10, 12 houses a month, and they never make an outbound call ever. They just take <laughs> inbounds, inbounds all day, inbound, 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 because they're focused that way. Mm-hmm. They're relationship-based. Right. And, you know, I say this all the time to agents. I'm like, no, your job's not to list houses. Your job's not to write contracts. And they're like, what? I'm like, your job is to find people who know people who want to buy or sell a house, become best friends with those people, and get them to refer the people to you. Your job is to get referrals. Right. Your job is not to write, you know, yell at home inspectors and scream at lenders. Right. That's the part that we're expecting you're good at. You better yeah. be good at that. You're yeah. a licensed agent. Come on. Yeah. You know, I shouldn't have to question you on that. Right. <laughs> but your job is really to get referrals. Right. And I will tell you that 99.8% of the agents running around don't totally understand that. So they're constantly beating their head against the wall, making cold calls, which yeah. is not, I, I'm not going to say it's bad. I know plenty of agents make a lot of money, make a lot of cold calls. It's just not my thing. It's not my I'm just I, not I've down. Never in my whole now life I know why one. Sean, <laughs> now I know why Sean said, Joel, you should interview Megan because now, no, but now I know. Because he thinks he thinks the same way. So okay, so um, that was big. That was a it was a huge thing. We could end this right now, just literally on doing that. Now you've met with them, and then at the end, whatever you say, okay, yeah. I'm- what are we doing? And they say what you're doing, and maybe you put them in the car. Now, if they're going to go out and look, you take them, right? Or are you going to delegate that? No, you- I I put them in my car. You take them. Um, uh, when they're ready to write the contract, you write it, you negotiate it, right? Yeah, I kind of hand over the keys after the contract's written. Um, some t- written and ratified, right? And ratified, right. Sorry, ratified, DC word for accepted. Yep. Sorry, but accepted by buyer and seller. Yep. Mm-hmm. Everyone has different words in different markets. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's ratified, right. but there are contingencies on it. Right, and, but and you I, still hand it over right then, right? N- not 100%, actually. So, so I would say I still do. A good amount of my home inspections. Um, so, but as far as like, uh, you know, and I will verbally ne- negotiate the home inspection items, especially if it's really contentious um, before we put things in writing. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, after the contract's ratified, I kind of feel like I'm like emotional support. <laughs> okay. And then, and then, and then you, you explain this to your client, what's going on. Do you give them fancy paperwork with everyone's names and numbers? How do you do it when you when you hand it into your team, when you hand it off? What do you say? You know, uh, people ask me these questions all the time. That's why it's just cool. I say we I have, have to put you on the spot. But yeah. how do you actually oh, so the, make the handoff in, um, internally? So as soon as the contract's ratified, uh, my um, admin will send an email saying, Hello, my name is. I will be, you know, your. I will be assisting Megan in this transaction. The first thing we need to do is schedule the home inspection. You know, congratulations. And um, have you verbally told them that's going down? Like, hey, you're getting an email from my team. Game yeah, on. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. So you handled that up yeah. front. There's no surprises because remember, again, this is why I get questions. I'm CC'd on all the emails, so I'll sometimes respond to all, and they know I'm in the loop on it. Because you are an extremely high level of hands-on. Right. Yes, I am. So now you're going 
hands off, right. which is okay. That's why I always like to ask about, you know, I say this all the time. If you ever watch the Olympics, you watch the relay yeah. races. Yeah. And I say to people, by the way, the races are won on the baton handoff. Yeah. They're not won between the, they they're all the pretty much running about the same speed. Yep. It's who handed off the baton better. And I find when I work with teams, real estate teams, lender teams, whatever, that's where it's all at. Yeah. It's literally one sentence. Like my, like Maggie will be in touch with you. Okay. <laughs> Either okay. today. <laughs> I mean, it's not, there's no, it's very seamless. And Maggie has just as many personal communication skills, if not more than I do. Now, so. do you, you, that is a, that you demand that, that is something that's important for, now is she your transaction coordinator? Yes. Okay. And, and so your transaction coordinator, you expect will give the same level of um, 100%. what I call, I mean, it's not fluff, but the, I, I feel like you put a big pillow around them. Yeah. And sometimes agents will put this big pillow around them, right? There's this awesome Megan lady and they're in this <laughs> warm pillow and then they get handed off into like By a steel like, room, <laughs> you know, and suddenly there's a transaction corner going, and I'm going to need this and then I'm going to need that. And I'm going to, you know, just wham, wham, wham. Yeah, no, that's not Maggie. Maggie's very much uh, an extension of, of my personality in that sense. She's very warm. And um, how long has she been with you probably three years now she was an agent for 10 years so she she's inactive she does not uh, work as a real estate agent she's on an active status but she has all of that information and I mean she has all the education that that she needs as a background so, so she's not just a transaction coordinator that I trained that doesn't understand real estate so so just so everyone hears this so Megan who's creating this great experience up front by meeting with them mm -hmm. and really having this warm, you're a warm person, this warm experience is handing, is is delegating, is moving her client through the process and the next body is Megan's twin. <laughs> it's not, it's not, Sorry, it's Maggie. not <laughs> robo Megan, okay? It's not a completely different personality. So the experience, your customer experience, now I know why you're, get so many referrals your customer experience is not dropping off no at all and a lot of agents have problems with that so you know i would tell you if you're listening to this and you're selling enough real estate where you're you have a team or you have a transaction coordinator that's just delegated to you dedicated to you a lot of people outsource that right just dedicated to you right you should really think about who that body is because yeah. if you're if you're providing a certain level of service and you've just basically knocked the cover off the ball you've hit the ball out of the park and then the person that you delegating to is like going, Woo, you know, yeah. you just provided a 10 service level and now they're at a three. Yeah. You know, they might be great with paperwork, but listen, this is the single largest, you know, here's the list. Death of a family member, divorce, buying or selling a house, by the way, and most stressful things in life. Right. The people are, I don't care if they bought seven houses, they're still freaking out. Yeah. They're always freaking out. Absolutely. Okay. And so you now have made sure you've won warm glove to the next warm glove. Now, when do you, under the guise of time here, this is fun, I'm gonna have you back sure, on here, but you. tell me when you come back in, in the um, transaction, when do they see <laughs> and feel Megan again in a big way? It's just, if every single transaction is so different. Let's say it went smooth, I know that, don't even laugh. Let's say the appraisal came in, the lender did not drop the ball, uh, the home inspection was very minor. Easy to negotiate. There was, you know, like three things. It wasn't like, you know, regrade the whole front. Right. Okay. It wasn't a big Say we handled issue. it with a $500 credit or something. Sure, something whatever simple. it was. When do you come back? Um, then I really, so so Maggie's all along telling them, oh, now it's time for you to, um, you know, research uh, insurance. Now it's time for you to think about shutting off your utilities and turning them on at the new property. So she's sending... Um, so you're still not back them. in. You're getting CC. I get CC'd, so I know they're doing it. And then she says that you know she sends them a checklist. This is what you need to bring to closing, and then Megan will meet you at the walkthrough at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. So that's then we see each other again in the walkthrough. So then they get the the shine bright, bright happy face <laughs> at the walkthrough. Yeah, it's always really exciting, you know. Now, do you go to your settlements? All the time. Always. Uh, always. Unless I'm out of the country or out of town or something. Okay. You I always go. I try not to do that. No. And then tell me what happens. We're running out of time. Now they've closed. Anything special happen in Megan land when they close? 
Um, so, I mean, you mean like a, a closing gift or something like that? Mm, it we, could be anything. Well, so the first thing I do when I have a new client is I friend them on Facebook. We add them to our MailChimp database. And then we are big on um, like events. Um, so we, I'll usually check back in. I, I follow their lives. So it's not like I have a checklist of, oh, I need to touch this person again because that's just not me but like uh, one of my clients just had twin babies and you know what I mean like we dropped off some donuts on Sunday so and she was so appreciative but like she had just closed on a house two months before having twin babies but I know what's going on in their personal life because I'm on their Facebook page and I'm following their their life so so did everybody hear that so Megan automatically, when she gets a new client, which almost sounds like it's like you're getting a new friend, which is yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah, it's definitely. Like a client, you're getting a new friend. You're 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 connecting with them on Facebook, which again, this is not an ad for Facebook, but let's face it, Facebook is what it is. It's not going anywhere. You need to be doing that. Um, but Megan is customizing her activities based on what is going on in her new friend. Josh knows he's heard me say it many times, NBF's new best friends. Yes. You know, one of your new best friends' lives, which is so impactful because they then look at you not as an agent, mm -hmm. but as one of their friends, which is a totally game changer. Because if you're if you're their friend that happens to sell real estate, that's a game changer for referrals. Yeah. If you're just someone that happens to sell real estate that they know, that's no big deal. Right. They know lots of those people. And I would say, um, I always everybody's situation is different and you're interacting with people at one of the most stressful times in their lives. Like, you know, it's like akin to having a baby. You just, you remember everything around that event. And so all 12, <laughs> yes, all 12. <laughs> um, but that, but I'm, but I'm saying you, it's a charged emotional kind of, you see people at their most vulnerable. I mean, people sometimes worry, what if I don't have a house to move into or, or what if I don't get the loan or, you know, they're, you see people at this phase in life and when you're there for them, it means a lot to them. I mean. And the key is, is actually staying there, staying not just there. being there. Yeah. Staying there is what that builds, is yeah, what no. builds that, 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 that huge. Um, all right. That was awesome. I want to uh, say one thing I heard you say, I just want to. You tell me if you like this or not. You use the term, uh, you're talking about something, a sales pitch or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just, anytime I hear someone say that, I always say this. So just humor me. Okay. So when you're pitching a ball, what are you trying to do? Um, you pull it back. You're trying to strike out the batter, right? Oh, right. So Sorry. Why would you pitch, <laughs> so why would you pitch anything to anyone? So okay. every time I hear the word pitch, I always, right. I always ask people, don't ever use that word again. Just say present. Okay. Because pitch is a negative word. Right, you don't want that. And why would we want that? Right? right. So I heard you, I heard you say it. So I figured I'd yeah. you would you would appreciate it. No, it's a good point. It. You know, it's it's. A, I'm going to use it. You're presenting. You're not pitching. I'm going to use it. It's great. It's really a negative connotation. You're right. You're literally trying to strike someone out. <laughs> it's like when someone says, "Oh, I'm target marketing." Oh, cool. Are you trying to kill them? Like literally. <laughs> like what does that mean exactly? And they go, "Wait a minute. I never thought about uh. that." Um, so everyone, thank you for spending uh, some time with me today. This was an awesome interview. I hope when you're hearing this right now, it's because you listened to the whole thing. Um, there are big points in here that are so easy to implement. You don't need any money. You don't have to spend any money on anything. You can implement. You can stop listening to this podcast and turn around and implement things immediately. A couple of just huge things Megan attempts to literally meet with everyone in a social setting. She said coffee in a social setting does not talk about business, wants to actually get to know them. That's huge. Some of you are like, yeah, what, what? And, and, and you need to be really letting that sink in. Her business is literally 98% referral. She's not making cold calls. She's taking inbound phone calls. Um, she uh, friends them on Facebook immediately, so she's following and she's a part of their life. From a time management perspective, people, listen up. Take this the right way. Don't be upset with me for saying this, okay? You are not too busy. You are definitely not too busy. The person sitting to my left right now has 12 children and a husband. She's busier than you. You are not too busy to make it happen. So with that said, thank you for uh, watching and listening to another edition of The Big Joel Show, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.
Thank you for listening to The Big Joel Show today. Uh, if you liked it, I would love, uh, love it if you left a comment on iTunes. And if you want more information about me and what I do and my podcast, please go to BigJoel.com.